would have to go to uh, Tamale South as well, uh, which are the new ones. And then the 204, I'm sure we've added more. Like I said, two, we were at 190, then we added more. So we are now at 204 out of the 275 constituency. I'll be giving you the new constituencies that we've added. And uh, also, I was telling you earlier about a situation where Anas Sabit has been reporting on. Uh, there's some shooting incident. Uh, we can. What, I have uh, the, the view of what actually happened, the footage is in, in your shots now. Uh, you can see uh, what actually transpired uh, earlier. And that's a collision center that resulted in some gunshots uh, later on out there. And you can see a number of security men uh, armed, uh, wearing their helmets and all. You can see uh, when the fight broke out, we have some military men also in sight there and Chauvin pushing uh, there at the collision. Someone has been held on to and uh, the, the EC presiding officer is now making an announcement. I can't really hear what he's telling them. I'm sure he's asking them to restore calm at that collision center. And that's the situation there uh, at the, one of the collision centers in that region. And my colleague, Anas Sabet, the, the EC official had been attacked by one of the men and the military men intervened quickly. Uh, that's an election official. You can see his, him in that jacket whilst he was making the announcement he was shoved by one of the men. I, it's unclear if it's an NDC man or an NPP man that shoved him. But the military men gun, you know, uh, you know, uh, they are armed. They are armed. Guns, I can count about what, three, four, five military men in there. Uh, police officials also numbering a number of them. But they've been able to overpower the man that shoved the EC official whilst he was making that announcement. Uh, Anas Sabit will make sense of what I'm seeing in that shot, he will join us shortly and help us. Uh, so two persons sustained gunshot wounds in the process in Techiman. That's one of the collision centers. So Anas Sabet um, is yet to join us, but you can see them. But if you're watching us or you're listening to us on radio, I've been recounting to you uh, what I'm seeing in that shot. Uh, in Techiman that led to uh, the two persons sustaining gunshot wounds. But it looks like the security men had that situation under control, made up of CID officials, military, police, all armed fully. They've been able to bring that situation under control. But two persons also managed to sustain gunshot wounds. I'll tell you uh, what their situation is currently when my colleague Anas Sabit joins us shortly. But that's the situation. So whilst we get Anas, um, Daniel, let me come back to you. So we look at the Ahafo yes. region. Yes, MFA, another interesting story. As you can see here, already uh, at, at, after just a cursory glance, you can see that it looks like it's, this is a blue river here. And it's running with just a dash of green in there <laughs> as an island. Um, but let's look at how they voted in the past uh, four or five election cycles. And of course, what our election headquarters team did was that they looked at the constituencies forming the Ahafu region of course. and looked at their voting trends. So it starts from 42.2% 42 .2 in 1996. Interesting graph there. Peaks at 57.4% in 2004. And then last election, we had 55.1% for the NPP. Mm -hmm. The NDC has an opposite story peaked at 57.00% in 1996. It dipped in 2000, 40.7%. The last election, it had 44.4%. This election, and I just had the figures um, delivered to us by our team and Kofi AJ is doing some great work back there. The NPP polled 59.42%. 59.42%. ,42%. If we were to track this, the MPP would be hovering yeah. around here. It will be their highest since 1996. Interesting figure. The NDC polled 40.58. And I'm talking From about the presidential 44. votes. Mm. Presidential votes. Now, the NDC's 40.58 is lower than the 40.70 recorded in 2000, which was their lowest re re um, recorded mark tally here since 1996. That means that once again, and this MFA will be the second time you're seeing this, it's the same as the OT region. In so the it new appears region, that there's yeah. some reward uh, for the creation of these new regions. I'm, I'm waiting to hear uh, how the Western North also went. 
We have other regions that were created, Savannah region. Would want to check if there was a reward there as well. Uh, interesting uh, trend. Now, the, the one region that I'm sure, and so yes, we've seen OT, we've Oti. seen Ahafo. And they all rewarded government for creating Let's that region. Let's look at um, the Northeast region. Okay. Because the Northeast region as well, for the Northeast region as well, we have the complete results for that region. Okay. And um, again, the Northeast region actually has the most interesting story. And Winston likes to call it the Baumia effect. Um, <laughs> because this afternoon, there is an effect. I would have you know that this afternoon, ba the word Baumia or the name Baumia was trending number one on Twitter. And the, co the conversation on Twitter was that Baumia should take over, or Dr. Baumia should take over from President Ekofado in 2024. What reasons are they And it was that? being debated. The reason that was being given was what's was called the Balmier effect here, that his impact in the election this time round. Especially in the Zongo communities. We've seen what happened in Savannah, Northeast. We'll be checking and giving you the details. Of course, it looks like mm. there is really a Balmier effect. Let's see. Let's test that hypothesis in the Northeast region. Again, I'll quickly run you through. There was 96, 12.4, uh, dipped to 11.30 in 2000. I'll quickly bring you here. The last mm -hmm. election was the highest. 49.4, the way they flipped the region, if I can use a flip expression, the MPP uh, had 52.24%. Again, an appreciation from 49.4%. Okay. 52.24%. Wow. Okay. The NDC dropped to 47.76%. Again, a depreciation from um, what happened there. But for the, in the sake of, in the case of the N. DC, this is not the lowest they have recorded. Okay. They recorded 43% in the past. So this is not the, you know, the worst performance they've had since 96, like we saw in OT mm. and in Ahafu regions. But again, the MPP pulling their best after the creation of a new region. This is one that the analysts will have a field day with. Well, we will definitely analyze them and know whether indeed um, they're rewarding government uh, for creating uh, these new regions. But let's go to uh, Tichiman South once again. Uh, gunshots, uh, two persons sustained gunshot wounds. You saw uh, the videos earlier and heard uh, about what actually transpired. But Anas Sabet now joins us uh, on the line from Tichiman South. Anas, uh, what led to this situation? Uh, we've seen footages of how that fight broke out. But tell us about these two persons that sustained the gunshot wounds. What conditions are um, they were rushed to the hospital. Uh, fortunately, there were ambulances uh, on standby, two ambulances were on standby. So, uh, moments after we saw the two men on the ground, the ambulance service took them to the hospital. We can't confirm the exact hospital. We're taking them to, neither can we confirm or say what their status or situation is. So, uh, we'll have to find out uh, later. Uh, currently it's raining heavily here, so uh, there is uh, calm, or calm has been restored okay. here at the Christmas Foundation Center after that incident that broke out earlier. But let me uh, briefly share with you what uh, well, Anas, uh, just before you take me back inside, I'm seeing uh, footages th that uh, it looks like there's a clash between supporters of both parties and uh, the security made up of the military and the police. I see people pelting stones at the military. And uh, wh what exactly transpired in that what I'm seeing? Tell us a bit more about it. That was moment after the returning officer uh, in charge of the Christmas house. Uh, coalition center declared the results in favor of the new security party uh, candidate marking agreements of quarter. Okay. You know, the whole project has been delayed uh, since last night and uh, there were issues raised by both parties. So the NDC uh, earlier uh, declaring that they were in a, in, in a list uh, later uh, uh, somewhere this morning. The NDC also projected that they were also the so uh, so much tension, uh, both parties have their uh, supporters marching up here uh, and then chanting, singing, you know, creating an effect that they both want. So there was so much tension, the enough security officials have to be brought in as a backup to ensure that they control the situation. Now, about 30 minutes ago, or roughly around 30 minutes ago, the EC 
were sure of uh, the result they have, so they had to declare. In the uh, coalition hall, there were issues between the executives of the NDC trying to prevent the EC from declaring. Now, as the EC did the declaration outside the hall, the NDC supporters who were put mass up out there had to also um, exchange and throw throwing stones, protecting that they are in disagreement with the declaration or the, or the results that were earlier declared. Uh, they were here in their numbers, the military and police officers here had to also uh, do well to save the day. So they had to dispense the crowd. In the process, they fired enough uh, firing shots or warning shots into the air uh, in the attempt to uh, disperse the crowd. Now, moments later, uh, after the crowd went back, we saw two persons down. Okay. And uh, the, 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 the one of them was motionless, the other had to be attended to. So the ambulances who were uh, which were on standby had to take them uh, to the hospital. So that, that is what happened. As I speak to you, I can't confirm whether the two persons we saw down did sustain gunshot wounds. It may be uh, during the stampede when people were avoid rushing back, one of uh, some of them may have fell and that happened. But we can we can say confirm that the two persons we saw down uh, were after the gunshots or after the warning shots were fired before the gunshots were fired, they could take any rush to the hospital. Moments after uh, it started raining heavily here and uh, that helped control the situation after all the supporters who were here in their numbers had to find their way out. So the security comes here at the pollution centre. Uh, most of the supporters are not here. It is only left with some few NDC executives inside the coalition hall, plus the uh, numerous security personnel who are here to save the day. Mm. But in the end, though, uh, Martin Ejimen Sakosa uh, was declared uh, the winner of that contest. But I'm sure you've been interacting uh, with the security and, of course, uh, some of the party executives on both sides. What exactly have they been telling you, and especially about that situation we witnessed earlier? What, what is the security, the security uh, saying about this particular situation? The security are not uh, remaining tight on the, the incident. The EC officials and media speaking to us, and the party executives, both NDC and NPC, who were in the hall, have been shocked by the incident. That from their reactions, they were all. Uh, you know, tense, and they, they, they remain, you know, tightly. They are not all not saying anything except that you could see they are quite worried about what happened. And um, uh, honestly, uh, we're all what we saw this afternoon, this evening, is something I have personally not witnessed before. Mm -hmm. Several gunshots. Uh, that we have a, a, a observers here also all finding some place to hide, and it was more or less like a. A war zone, but uh, fortunately, uh, some has been restored and must also say the, the, the rain, the heavy rain, uh, came in timely to uh, help control the situation. Anasta Bet, I hope you're safe and uh, continue to stay safe. Uh, and of course, um, much later, we'll get some reaction from security at that regional level to find out exactly uh, what happened at the Tichiman South constituency. But uh, Nanas, I don't know if you've heard uh, from Martin E.J. of course, uh, the beneficiary of this um, uh, particular election and then also uh, the chaotic scenes that we've seen. Have we heard him say anything about it? You mean the candidate that was declared winner? Exactly. Yes, um, unfortunately, he, after the declaration, he went out and then uh, in jubilant mood with some NPP supporters who were already outside. So they moved with their car and uh, we were not unable to get him even and speak to us. But the, 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 the NPP candidate was still in the hall. In, in one of the videos I sent, you could see he was actually the testing, I mean, against the EC, the police had to come in to get him off. But he's also not speaking to us well, now. Was he the one that shoved the EC official? We've seen two men, one in a Batakari uh, that uh, pushed the EC official. There's also one that is in the Lacoste, red the and white, that Lacoste, pushed the table. In Lacoste, white, and in a strip, Lacoste strip. Striped um, one. Uh, that, that is, that is uh, Christopher Basson. Okay, so he is, pushed yeah. the table uh, to hit the EC official whilst he was uh, announcing the results. Exactly. I'm I was sure at was... the high table when the whole incident happened, so I was fortunate to have captured that incident. But, but uh, the, 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 
The whole situation is quite... Okay, serious. so you see that uh, if you're listening to us on radio, that's what exactly happened. The EC official was just about declaring the results using a megaphone. And there's a table between him, security officials, and then, of course, uh, some supporters gathered around the table. So just when the EC official raised the megaphone to start announcing the results, there was a push of a table, just like in front of me, uh, the, of the candidate, the NDC candidate, pushed that table, almost hitting the EC official, whilst another person... Who is in the Batakari, by the way, Anastabet, who also tried to hold on to the EC official whilst he was announcing? He is also a constituency executive of the NDC. Okay. I, I, I don't remember the name, but uh, he is the organizer of the party at the constituency level. In fact, even the regional chairman was available. Almost all the, all the people who contested the party, the regional secretary, were on the board during the announcement. But... Uh, Plus some former members of parliament on the ticket of the NDC here in the in the, the constituency, and they protested. In fact, the protest started early this morning when they realized or when they felt they were being cheated in a way, according to okay. the allegations they said. They said they won the election easily, but the EC is trying to manipulate the, the, the results in favor of the entity. So they, in a way, incited their fans to protest against whatever decision the EC is going to come up with later. So I was also carrying on a lot of this uh, NDC fans who are here uh, chanting and singing. That also uh, calls for the NDC fans who are also home. Listen, I, I heard them about uh, them people on radio urging their fans to get to the coalition center. And so they were very okay. uh, uh, huge in terms of campus uh, before the declaration. So that's unfortunate that uh, we are grateful to the sound. Uh, as I speak to you. Anastabet, thank you very much. And you may want to check on the two persons that sustained the gunshot wounds much later. We'll get an update on their situation. Thank you very much. That's Anastabet uh, bringing us the situation from Tichiman South. Uh, of course, I'll go back to Studio 997 and join uh, my colleague Benjamin Akaku. But before then, so we have 204 out of 275 results presidential. That's where we stand, 202, 204 out of the 275. Benjamin Akaku, if you're on standby, you have Dr. Nansata and Suleiman Abraima. Take it away.